What is ventricular tachycardia is an abnormal heart rhythm that starts in your heart's two lower chambers called ventricles. It's also known as VTAC or VT. Normally, electrical signal starts from SA node in atrium and travels to AV node which serves as an electrical gateway to the ventricles. But here in this condition, abnormal electrical signal starts from ventricles make your heart beat so fast as it cannot pump enough blood to your body and leads to decreased cardiac output. What happen next? It will lead to drops in your blood pressure and start to have symptoms. Do you know a healthy heart typically beats about 60 to 100 times a minute at rest. But in ventricular tachycardia, the heart beats faster, usually 100 or more beats. Naturally, you may have a doubt, is ventricular tachycardia dangerous? Although a few seconds of VT may not result in permanent problems, but remember, longer periods are dangerous, and multiple episodes over a short period of time are referred to as an electrical storm. Let's see the causes of VT. The most common cause of ventricular tachycardia is ischemic heart diseases. This is also known as coronary heart diseases or coronary artery diseases, which means your heart muscles cannot get enough blood and oxygen because of blockage in coronary arteries. The next causes are cardiomyopathy, heart surgery, myocardial infarction. These heart surgery and myocardial infarction causes scarring in the heart cells resulting in VT. Next comes heart valve diseases. Just an example is aortic stenosis. Then myocarditis, electrolyte problems like low blood levels of magnesium or potassium. Then sudden inherited conditions like long QT syndrome. It means it's a condition affecting repolarization of heart after a heartbeat. Next, sarcoidosis, which refers to tiny collection of immune cells from granulomas in the heart tissues result in VT. Then, alcohol withdrawal syndrome and medication toxicity. Now, let's see the symptoms of VT. It includes chest pain called angina, shortness of breath, dizziness, pounding heartbeat called palpitations, and lightheadedness. Let's see the classification of VT. VTEC or VT is grouped according to how long an episode lasts. It can be grouped as non-sustained VTEC and sustained VTEC. Non-sustained VTEC lasts less than 30 seconds and stops on its own. These are brief episodes may not cause any symptom, but sustained VTEC lasts more than 30 seconds. Uh, do you know? A sustained ventricular tachycardia, if not treated, may result in ventricular fibrillation and turn into cardiac arrest. This conversion of VT into VF is called the degeneration of the VT. Let's see ECG interpretations. VTAC appear in various presentations. The first one, monomorphic ventricular tachycardia, as you can see in this picture. Monomorphic simply means every value has a single unique tab. Here you can see QRX complex in same size, shape and direction and usually wire and buzzer and greater than 0.12 seconds in duration. Next the rhythm. It's regular and rate typically between 120 to 250 beats per minute. Here you cannot assess P waves, T waves and PR interval because ventricular contractions are so fast. The another presentation of VD is polymorphic ventricular tachycardia. Here the rhythm does not save and it has multiple QRX morphology, which means you can see here the size and shape of the QRX complex is vary. Did you hear about Torsa depoint? It is a type of polymorphic VT that exhibits prolonged QT interval. The causes may be hereditary, certain drugs, and electrolyte disorders. Next, how to diagnose ventricular tachycardia? Physical examination and history collection. Blood tests. It includes electrolytes, serum potassium, magnesium, calcium, and phosphate levels. And you know, Hypokalemia is a common VT trigger and commonly seen in patients taking diuretics. Then, blood glucose level, CBC, level of troponin, PTINR, TSH, and liver function test. Other diagnostic measures involves ECG, the quick and painless test measures the electrical activity of the heart, Holter monitor, a small portable device that records the heart activity. Then electrophysiology study. It uses small thin wire electrodes placed directly on the heart to evaluate for abnormal heart rhythm. Cardiac event monitor. 
treadmill testers and echocardiogram. Let's move to management and treatment of VT. In emergency situation, if the patient is unstable with no pulse, treatment includes CPR, electrical defibrillation, and IV medication such as injection amiodarone, IV procanamide, and injection lidocaine. Remember always, it is very essential to manage VT according to the presentation in ECG. In polymorphic VTEC such as Tocidipoin, as we discussed before, assess the course first and treat accordingly. For example, if any medication causes the particular VT, stop QT interval prolonging medication first. Beta blockers and magnesium sulfate also consider in the management of VT. Other management includes radiofrequency catheter ablation, implantable cardioverter defibrillator. In radiofrequency catheter ablation, the healthcare provider will insert a catheter into heart and destroy the tissue where the abnormal electrical signal starts. In case of implantable cardioverter defibrillator, the device monitors and controls your heart rhythm. If it detects an episode of intercular tachycardia, it quickly sends an electrical signal to get your heart back to normal rhythm. If this video really helps you, please like, share and subscribe my channel. Thanks for watching.